We have a responsibility to get the work to the streets. MDOT presents the Extra Mile Podcast. Highways, um, movement of goods, these are things that we rely on every day. Got to have the ability to get their product to market. As long as you're performing, we want to be behind you pushing. Welcome into another edition of the Extra Mile Podcast presented by the Mississippi Department of Transportation. I'm MDOT Digital Media Manager Paul Catull. I'm joined by my co-host Will Kraft. He handles government and constituent affairs at uh, the agency. Today we are at the Neshoba County Fair. Very excited to be uh, on location here. A little later in the show we're going to talk to State Senator Jennifer Branning. Uh, But uh, right now we've got State Representative Scott Bounds. Very excited to talk to him. He of course uh, represents Leake County and, and Neshoba County. And he is the president of the Neshoba County Fair. Uh, really appreciate you speaking with us today. Absolutely, Paul. Glad to be here. Will, good to see you again, too. Yes, and and, and um, Wednesday of the Neshoba County Fair. And we've had a great fair up to through. Started last Friday and runs through this Friday. But uh, it's been fun. And... Um, I'm in a new role. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Tell, tell us about sir. Well, what so yeah, yeah, well, y'all want to get into this right now? We'll go yes, ahead. Sir, let's do it. All right, let's do this. So, so yes, yeah, so I've been on the board 27 years. Oh wow! And uh, this being on this board is sort of like being on the Supreme Court. You either die or you quit. Okay. <laughs> I don't know of anybody we've ever fired because uh, it's a tough job. It's a tough job, and uh, you know, even when I was elected president back in October of last year, our current president—I mean, our president at that time—retired, and the board elected me then at that time to serve as the president of the fair. And immediately, my pay went from zero to zero. <laughs> Zero to zero. Well, so, but the, didn't hurt you, but it didn't help much. So, yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, but no, it's something. Uh, you know, grew up here in the Shelby County, been coming to the fair all my life. Uh, my family has three different cabins here on the fairgrounds, and uh, oh, wow. so so uh, my brothers, that's my brothers and everybody else. But um, but yeah, so the fair is really uh, it's you, you got to have a passion to do this thing, and we're not I'm not clapping myself on the back or glad handing anybody, but the board is totally volunteer. We really oh, wow. are. Uh, we have a great staff out here that is paid, but for us, the board, it makes the policy decisions and implements the policies and directs our staff on what to do. Uh, we're all volunteers, but they're, they have the same passion for the fair as I do. And a lot of them are, um, uh, I'm not going to call them legacies, but a lot of them's fathers or grandfathers or whatever sure. have served. So they have a lot of institutional knowledge of the fair also, okay? So, uh, but yeah, it's, um, uh, the fair is, um, Unique, obviously, uh, the last remaining campground fair in America. Yeah, for the folks that, that may not be familiar at all with what the Shoba County Fair is, uh, maybe give us kind of a little, you know, just a synopsis of what goes yeah. on here. Yeah, well, I guess uh, let, let's go back 133 years when it started. Absolutely. In, in 1889, and it started as just a one day, or really a half a day, agricultural type thing there's local farmers around here decided they want to get together and they got together right here on founder square I didn't know that. we got Ooh. together right here on founder square and they came down here for a half a day and they showed crops and they the women showed the quilts they'd made and everything else and they said hey you know this is pretty cool we'll do this come back next year well they come back in 1890 and did it again then they come back in 1891 and it was a uh, 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 they made it a full day, and then it went about six years, and they said, you know what, we bring our wagons, we stay in our wagons, sleep under our wagons and everything else, and make it two days. I've never heard this part. So now it's eight days, and uh, we don't sleep under our wagons anymore. I'm sure there's a lot of people sleep under their cabins, but I, <laughs> well, I'm not going to go there. But, uh, but, um, but it really is, it was founded, I mean, the founding fathers started it as a just a way for the display the community agricultural aspect of this community which is called the cold water community here in the Shelby County and uh, so it just grew from there they began to get they'd get a band to come in and play for one night or they'd then it you know they'd invite the governor and then you know the governor started coming then political speakers started coming so it's just for 133 years it's a ball it's okay. huge. Absolutely. I mean, it's a, yeah, it's a there, there, there was one year in um, World War One. I, I don't remember that the fair was not held. 
And then obviously it was not held in 42, 43, 44, or 45 for World War II. Mm-hmm. And then it was not held in 2020 for COVID. And uh, I'll never forget the night that we met down here as a board. We met right over there at the pavilion and we came down here at five o'clock and we sit here at eight o'clock and just deliberated and discussed what were we going to do? Were we going to let this pandemic shut down this institution of the Shelby County Fair for a year? And you know, there's been a lot learned about sure. the pandemic and all since then. You know, we may have, would have made a different decision if we'd been armed with the knowledge that we have now about the pandemic that we didn't have then, right. but, but we made the decision to not have the fair that year, as, and as was well there are a lot of things that changed in 2020. Football games changed, um, a, true. a lot of things changed, but uh, came back last year, we had one of the biggest fairs on record, yeah. and this one is on pace to be very, very successful. That's awesome. That's, that's excellent. Uh, you mentioned it a little bit, but the Neshoba County Fair is very synonymous with politics. There's the retail politics kind of element to it. Can you kind of talk about that part of the fair? Yeah, so we're in a, uh, this is 2022. Next year is an election year. So yep. we, we sort of, we don't run the fair on four-year cycles, but we, we, we look at our financials and everything else at a four-year window, sure. okay? In, in other words, I'm looking today what did we do in 2018, the year before 2019, which was an election year? Right. Where, where are we at on ticket sales? Where are we at on our finances? Where are we at on attendance? And it's, it's, we have learned through the years that we can follow this four-year election cycle engaged just about every year, whether attendance is going to be the same or up or down or whatever. I mean, you can, we can only forecast it, but it's, it stays pretty steady. What about the you speaking of all the people coming in the logistics does the the parking area out here it's just it, it blows my mind every time we pull up you know long before you actually get to the fairgrounds you start seeing people parked you know <laughs> everywhere they can get yeah uh, i'm sure that's a bit difficult to navigate and making sure folks are where they're supposed to be out well there. well it is but um i know y'all are MDOT, so i'm gonna give y'all a shout out but i, I want to especially give a shout out to the district six engineering office and neil patterson and his staff. oh yeah uh, they work with us tremendously on um, signage for as you know pedestrian war- crossing warnings and things like that uh, to be able to pick up the phone and say, hey, Neil, you know, fair's coming up. And he'll say, man, we got you covered. We know what to do. And uh, uh, y'all do a, your crews do a fantastic job of keeping the right of ways cut prior to the fair, trash picked up, things like that. And I'm just telling you that. Y'all do. I appreciate they, that. They, they do a great job. And uh, But, you know, yes, you're, you're right, Will. I mean, coming into the fair, you've got people parked on y'all's right of ways. You know, just, and, yeah. and things well, like yeah. that for you know a half mile one way and a half mile the other way. And uh, but uh, y'all are y'all are y'all are good partners with us in, 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 in pedestrian control and things like that. So we really appreciate it. But yeah, um, and you see more of that half mile out parking either way at night. You know, so, yeah. nightly entertainment Bands, and you know, yeah. things like that. Uh, election years next year will be a this is, look. This is just a little baby the election year right. of politics this year. I mean, mm-hmm. we've got two hours of speaking this morning, two hours tomorrow morning. Next year we'll have morning, noon, no, we'll have morning after, morning speaking, afternoon speaking on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. All I mean, with days. all the candidates and everything else, we'll, we'll go from 18 people speaking this year to 70 people speaking next year. Oh, so, wow. You know. How many attendance folks do you think you got this year? Well, so we get asked that a lot. Um, we average now, and you got to keep in mind that there's not that many people on the ground, this many people at any one time, okay? Um, we average about 30,000 in ticket sales, okay, through the course of the week. Um, on the grounds at any one time in the 601 cabins and 578 camper spots we have, we estimate at any one time, there's probably eight to 10,000 people on the grounds and the cabins and everything. But here's what you gotta remember. We can't get an accurate number and I'll tell you why. Even though we can know how many tickets we sell, we don't charge kids 10 and under to come mm. to the fair. Oh, okay. We don't charge kids 10 and under to come to the fair. So you can look out anywhere out here and you can see how many kids are 10 and under. So I don't know how much they add to the population. You know? yeah. So uh, 
Uh, it's definitely a kid-friendly environment. Bring your family out. Sure. It's you know. definitely a kid-friendly environment. Um, you know, it's like, unfortunately, y'all, it's gotten, uh, it's like any other place now. you got to use common sense, okay? Um, uh, it's, it's still, though, a safe, safe venue for kids. And, uh, you know, we can't. You know, you can't leave your car out in the parking lot and leave the door unlocked. Sure, I mean, that's right. Know, I mean, it's just, you know, you got to remember that even though we're, um, it is, the fair is what it is, it's still, now, right now, it's like a small city. It's 10,000 people yeah. out here, and it's going to have small city issues, you know. Absolutely. And uh, so, uh, but but anyway, we work through them. We work through them, and we make them work. we got to outstanding security contractor and they do a great job in maintaining order and uh i will tell you the the, the shift that works from six at night to seven in the morning i, I wouldn't want to, i wouldn't want their job no, well, I wouldn't well shout out shout out to them absolutely yes sir yeah. about to about to wrap things up we do want to okay. talk about a little bit of transportation sure. uh, maybe talk about the emergency uh bridge wow. road and bridge repair fund what has right. that done for right. rural mississippi really and well, other communities? yeah rural, rural, yeah yeah the, that that fund the emergency road and bridge fund um especially for, for people like me that represent rural areas and have rural constituencies. Uh, I mean, that's just, I mean, that is, that's land yap on top of everything else right. that MDOT does for us on the state systems and everything. And uh, I know the supervisors that come to us every year and lobby the legislature, lobby us, you know, they're, they're focused on that emergency road and bridge that's money. Right. And, you know, they, they worry about the farm to market roads and things like that. But that emergency road and bridge money, that impacts people out in the rural districts to have a to have a bridge between them and the grocery store or, or, or a, a bridge that needs to be able to carry a school bus their children to school. And uh, so that emergency road and bridge fund, uh, the legislature, sometimes we have to lick our cap over sometimes. And we don't do good things, but I'm going to tell you, this is one thing when the emergency road and bridge fund was established and we got MDOT's buy-in on it on what we were going to do. It's a game changer for rural transportation infrastructure. That's been awesome, great. awesome. That's been yeah. great. I'll, I'll, I'll take us home here. Last question oh, yeah. for you. Uh, getting very Neshoba specific. Is there a, a, a meal or maybe one that you prepare or one that your family does that you just this is the you know the, the highlight of the fair for you? What's what is your fair <laughs> go-to food? Well, you uh, think about it. That's good I, we're talking about it to like at my at the midway or at my cabin. You it, want me to do both of them? Yeah, absolutely. Well, absolutely. nothing like a big old greasy corn dog. Oh yeah, <laughs> anyway, yeah. Anyway. I love it. <laughs> we had some pizza earlier, so we we, yes. we caught you on the grease department. We love grease. Yeah, yeah but uh, but on Friday night, uh, my family and I uh, and my uh, my in laws at, at our cabin, uh, I fry catfish. And I always make it a point. We don't do anything but Mississippi farm raised catfish. There you go. We, oh, don't, yeah. we don't buy this stuff that's raised in a pond overseas and yeah. all that kind of stuff. We don't do that. So uh, probably my favorite meal is the fried catfish that we do. Did you notice that I said fried corn dog, fried catfish? I mean, you know, I'm so. here for it. We love it. We love it. We love it. Hey, well, we can we can we can get back on our exercise regimen after the fair. That's right. That's no if we doubt. had one. If you yeah. don't, <laughs> forget about it. Well, Representative Bounds, we really appreciate yes. the great insightful conversation. Thanks for having us. Uh, making Absolutely. this happen so we could be here today. Absolutely. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate the work y'all are doing and um, obviously we y'all are welcome out here anytime. And uh, we look forward to uh, working with y'all in the coming session. When we get back to Jackson, we'll certainly have to get you to come by the, the podcast studio there and do a kind of a follow-up episode. We'd love to. Uh, sometime. Awesome. Right. love to. Thank you. We put $250 million into what we call the Emergency Road and Bridge Program, and that program continues to work. About $237 million went to County Roads, 213 with the county roads, bridges, and another 37 million to the state. And then the legislature came back last year and put another $89 million in the program. And this year, the state legislature gave us another $100 million to put out to the counties and to the municipalities. That is great work for the infrastructure system. But in addition to that, I still have to give thanks to the legislative body because you need to know, as you look at this system, that it is the Department of Transportation and we the commissioners who are responsible for planning the activities that goes on in building and maintaining the infrastructure system, but it is the legislative body who actually provides the dollars to make it work.
what you just heard was MDOT Central District Commissioner Willie Simmons giving his speech at the Neshoba County Fair. Uh, thank you for staying with us. And we are now joined by State Senator uh, Jennifer Branning, a repeat guest on the podcast. She represents Leak and Winston Counties and, of course, Neshoba County here at the Neshoba County Fair. And uh, very relevant to MDOT, she is the chair of the Highways and Transportation Committee. Uh, in the state senate and we really appreciate you joining us here today thank you for having me on i've been looking forward to it thank you so much we got the uh, got the, the the access up here to the second floor so we got a little overlook spot going here but uh got a, a little bit of a breeze we're cooling off finally found some shade uh, well how's the, how's it going enjoying the fair this year everything has been great this year you know the fair is always hot we can always plan on that, but it yeah. just seems like this morning we've had a little bit of a breeze, a little bit just nicer little. than usual, so we'll take it. That's right. Yeah, I, uh, I somehow managed to keep finding the sunspots and avoiding <laughs> the shade. I don't know if that's a curse or what's going on, but... Um, well, and gave a great speech this morning. Uh, we talked Thank about you. a laundry list of things, and uh, especially uh, stuff that went on this past legislative session. It was obviously a, a very successful uh, session for MDI. We've talked about that uh, a good bit on the podcast and otherwise. But any highlights that you wanted to mention just from uh, this past year? Yeah, so, well, as you guys know, we worked really hard on MDOT's budget. Uh, we had a little extra money to work with, and we wanted to be sure that we were plugging it into the right places. And I spent a great deal of time working with Director Brad White, who is doing doing a tremendous job and he spent a lot of time educating me on how the federal program works because as a new chairman uh, it's just a big ball of wax a lot of moving parts and so I've done uh, my homework to try to get up to speed but taking all that into account you know we created a budget that provided some flexibility uh, plug some extra dollars into the paving program into capacity and so now we want to look forward to the future and hopefully find a steady revenue stream uh, Really, I'm looking at capacity for the future. You know, I know it's hard to plan uh, year to year when the agency is not sure what will be coming their way by way of state revenue, additional dollars. And so I want to try to find a solution for that. And I know that'll certainly be at the forefront, probably this coming up session. Yes. Maybe, you know, I know it's a big election year next year coming up. So maybe in the next one, uh, you know, depending upon what that conversation looks like. But, I, you know, I'm going to leave that with the, you, uh, the, the brilliant minds over there to figure out because I did not know the answer either. So, so, the, so the session really, really feels like it just wrapped up. But yeah. I've got to imagine you all are already working heavily to prepare for the next one, right? That's right. Already doing some research, talking to people, as you mentioned experts I have to include people much smarter than myself when we're talking about the numbers game we've got to make sure that whatever we do going forward that we take into account the fact that our economy will not always be what it is this year so I, I do I am working to to come up with some solutions uh, planning some hearings for later in the fall we don't have a definite date set so that all of those minds can come together and we can look at what our options are going forward no doubt. And we truly at MDOT, we really appreciate all the work that uh, that you and your colleagues do. Uh, Taking it back to the fair a little bit, can you talk about, I know this is in Neshoba County, this is your county, so yes. do you have any favorite memories here at the fair or anything you want to touch on? You know, I grew up here. Uh, I was born in 1979, and I remember when, I, well, let me back up and say I don't remember it. I was one when Reagan came to the fair. I've heard it talked about so many times. Wow. I feel like I do have a memory of it, but it's more hearing the people talk about it. You know, I was raised uh, coming here every year as my parents would prepare the cabin. We have a family cabin, number 106. They've had it for years and years and years, and so as a small child, I would come and play under the pavilion in the sawdust as my parents worked and got the cabin ready and so all I know is coming to the fair all of my life now it is what you make it growing up my favorite part was you know the rides the ferris wheel the food the funnel cakes the lemonade as I have gotten older I appreciate the flea market and simply just porch time time with my family at the cabin catching up with my aunts my sister my mom uh, sort of a family reunion style it, you know, and, and so we really enjoy it. it. It makes us come together as a family, just spend good quality time together before we go back to our busy lives and school and, and those sorts of things. Excellent. I feel like, you know, and that's a, it is, you know, a, a political event, but maybe even more so, it is that family, what is the, the phrase, it's a, the biggest house party? or Mississippi? Mississippi's giant there house party. That's right. And it's Love very it. true. I mean, mm -hmm. you come out here, I know you can see some of these, you know, porches. It is all about front porch sitting. Absolutely. Um, and you just walk by and somebody will offer you lemonade or some mm -hmm. tea or, or whatever it may be. Uh, you may have never met them before, but it's very, it's a very community uh, family, you know, type event out here. And you just mentioned too, and I, 
don't know if we talked about this in the first segment. There is the, the fair rides, right? They've got Absolutely. the funnel cakes and other things. The tracks, you know, we've got the horse races. The horse races, a lot of fun to go over there and see that if you have not seen it. The pageant is one of my favorite things. Ah. Um, Grace Maxey won, won the title this year. I'm so happy Very and nice. so proud for Grace and her family, such a fine young lady. I did participate in the pageant back in 1990-something. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> did not win, placed top ten, but great experience. I enjoyed it. I learned a lot from it. It helped me build some confidence, maybe in doing some things that I do now. So a lot of things, a lot of good things that go on out here. So I'm happy that this happens in my home county. Um, happy to be a part of it. There is so much. Uh, maybe swinging back. Woo. Transportation a little bit. We had a, a frisbee uh, incoming. <laughs> there for a that was awesome. Uh, lots of projects going on around right now. Any any big projects maybe uh, coming up or ongoing? Uh, well, Highway 19 has been a major project for us yeah. here in Neshoba County, and it's something that we've been working on well before my time in the Senate. Uh, Senator Ward before me, you know, helped work to try to secure some funding for that, and it's in the works now, and so pretty soon we're going to see the end result, and we are just thrilled as a community. You know, we're one of the few, if not the only, county in the central part of the state without four-lane access, mm. so we're happy that that is working out for us. Um, you'll notice last year, actually, Highway 21 coming into the fair was resurfaced. There was a paving project there with some of the lottery proceeds, so we're seeing the results here in the central part of the state, the good work that's being done by MDOT, by the commission. I think Commissioner Simmons is doing a great job paying close attention to the rural part of the state, which is right here. This is one of the most rural parts sure. of his district, and so we do appreciate him for that. You know, but the emergency road and bridge fund oh, yeah. is one oh, yeah. thing that I'm very fond of. I think that program works really nicely. And of the money that we appropriated this year, as you guys know, 100 million goes into that into that fund. And so it's to benefit communities just like this one. With the critical infrastructure, I think one of my goals has been to go out there and identify where the critical needs. Go grab those needs, fix them, get them, get them fixed, repaired, and let's move on to something else. Uh, you know, 2017, I believe, was when the state of emergency was declared for some of the bridge work and whatnot. And from that point forward, which I was still very new in the legislature and was not even on the transportation committee, but it seems like we sort of shifted into another gear. Sure. As far as transportation goes, the emergency road and bridge fund was formed in the special session of 18. We begin to do some different things, a lottery, and, and there's so it's coming together. I think the world of transportation in our state is improving greatly. But we have an opportunity before us right now with the additional revenue that we have. I realize that may not always be the case, but I think we need to be smart with what we have and see how we can make it work for us in transportation. Excellent, excellent. So we had uh, Representative Bounds on earlier, and I know you guys both uh, represent uh, Neshoba County. So yes. uh, in different chambers, but how do you how do you two kind of work hand in hand to advance the interests, you know, transportation and other interests? Well, Representative Bounds does a phenomenal job for Neshoba County. He's been serving, I believe he's in his fifth term, so he's been doing it a long time. And there is a reason that people keep sending him back. He's That's doing right. a good job. Uh, so when I was first elected, we, we made an agreement that, look, we're going to work together. Uh, we may not always agree on policy, I would say we agree 99% of the time. We may not always agree on approach, but we always sure. sit down and say, okay, how, you know, our, our community needs X, Y, Z. How do we get this done? And we don't look at it as we're in competing chambers. You know, some people kind of take that sure. approach. It's House versus Senate. It's not like that. Um, or that's not been my experience. Representative Bounds has been very good to sit down with me. We work together. We try to formulate a plan, and we execute it. And we've been very successful in bringing projects home to our county. So it's been a pleasure to work with him. That's good to hear. That's good to hear. Uh, you mentioned all the activities from that special session uh lottery merge river so that was my first month at MDOT too so I, I agree gears definitely changed because I was all of a sudden in the thick of all these new programs and uh, drinking from the fire hose probably similar experience. that's right um, just kind of circling back again to the fair a little bit you know this is a question that I know we ask you uh, in a little different terms way back in January but uh, food you oh know, yeah we all love to eat a great uh, question representative balance piled on about the fried uh, varieties that are around here do you have a favorite, you know, does your family cook one night or something, a special night yes, that stands I'll out? Yes, I'm glad to talk to you about food. Oh, I am yeah. a foodie. Let's go. Okay. you got to have a funnel cake Yeah. yeah. from the Midway, yeah. and you have to polish it off with some lemonade. 
Yep. You must do that before you leave the Neshoba County Fair. It's got to be a 32-ouncer. That's exactly <laughs> right. Now, what we do at our cabin, we usually have a different meal each night. We have a Mexican night. We have a steak night. We, we barbecue night, things like that. My favorite is on Saturday. Okay. We do kind of a potluck on Saturday. We do the home cooking type thing. My mom always does butter beans. We might have cornbread, that kind of thing. But one thing that stands out from my childhood is my mom makes these what we call brownie muffins. Okay. It's a brownie and a muffin all in one, and it's the best thing you, you'll ever eat. She's been making them since I was a small child, and so it is a tradition. She makes them every fair. And the kids, now my kids just go crazy. Over and that them. was Kevin 106. 106. You can go there with me when we're done. Make sure you remember that. Yeah. That's pretty interesting. I think yeah. everybody, I feel like everybody kind of has a, a specialty, uh, you know, whatever Absolutely. cabinet and family. Thing well, it's tradition. Have. You know, you establish tradition with family, and, and it's just very enjoyable. So, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, Senator Branning, we really appreciate you talking to us today. Really packed a lot of information in 10 minutes or so. It's very exciting to hear kind of what's on the horizon for transportation. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Thank you for having me. I've enjoyed being here. Sure. All right. So we'll go ahead and wrap things up on the, uh, the Extra Mile podcast. Thank you out there to all our listeners for joining us. You can uh, watch and listen to shows wherever podcasts can, podcasts can be found. Uh, you can go to goem.com forward slash the extra mile be sure to follow us on social media uh, facebook twitter instagram the handle there is at mississippi dot uh, before we get out here we'll give a shout out to drew hall our editor our producer katie hornsby and of course we'll close out with the uh, the tagline remember to drive smart out there on mississippi highways